How's it going everybody? It is Ethan or Unknown Coder and welcome to the first actual coding episode of Let's Build Twitter. So unfortunately I had a very hard week this week. I actually recorded probably like 10 to 20 hours worth of content. Then I found out that none of the audio actually worked because I wasn't outputting the audio correctly. Also the audio was scuffed. Um, so yeah, so I've had to re-record several episodes and I'm actually starting all over from scratch. So I've also made the executive decision that I'm not really going to be recording these in quote unquote episodes. I'm just going to kind of record step by step and then kind of piece together the episodes and then record the introductions and the outros as we go that way i know exactly what episode we're on and all of that good stuff so essentially i'm just going to pause in between each section of what i want to record and if i want to split it there we will go ahead and split it there and that will be the episode this is the first episode of coding so we need to go ahead and get our environment set up so i'm going to go ahead and make a new directory mkdir and i'm just going to call this footer and then we are going to CD into Twitter. And this is just on my desktop for easy access. So at this point, we need a front end and we need a back end folder. Um, I don't know if we're going to. Yeah, I might as well make a back end folder. So I'm going to go ahead and make a back end folder. Well, actually, first, I'm going to do git init to make a git repository. I just want to say that I'm not going to be releasing this publicly until after maybe hit a thousand subs or something. I just don't want to give it away for free. If you guys are trying to follow along or whatever, you can do that as well. I'm not necessarily trying to go super slow or anything like that. So if I talk too fast or I'm coding too fast, just remember that this is not a tutorial or anything like that. I'm just kind of walking through building an application. Now that we have this all set up, if I wanted to, I could uh, break this up into like episode one, episode two, whatever. I think I'm just going to use commits. That'll be a little bit easier. I suppose. So I'll just go ahead and make a commit every single time I finish an episode. And then whenever I actually push this up to a GitHub that I can share publicly with you guys, it'll just have all the commits there. You can kind of go through them. So now let's go ahead and switch over to, well, actually we need to go ahead and make a directory for the backend. And then let's go ahead and switch over to Eclipse so I can create the project. All right, so I was just changing a couple settings. Hopefully we'll make the project a little bit easier to see. I'm gonna play around with our sidebars and consoles and all of that good stuff later on. Let's go ahead and generate the project. So I am using Eclipse Enterprise Edition with the STS plugin. That is because Spring Tool Suite is trash. It's not very good. I'm sorry to say it. Uh, Spring Tool Suite 3 plugin though, actually worse than I expected. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new Spring Starter project for our backend. And this is just going to be called Twitter. Maybe we can do footer backend or something. And the group ID is going to be com.footer. Uh, footer backend is fine. Version, I'm just going to put 0 0.0 0.1. The description is going to be backend for a reverse engineered footer application. And the package is going to be com.footer. Well, so go ahead and click next. We don't need to do that. So now what do we need? So obviously we are going to need Spring Web. So go ahead and grab Spring Web. We'll probably need WebSocket eventually, but for now we don't. We obviously also need, so we also need Spring Data JPA. So go ahead and grab Spring Data. We need the Postgres driver. So go ahead and PostgreSQL driver. And then we also need the um, Spring Security. Go ahead and grab security. And then we are also going to need Spring Boot DevTools. And we don't really need DevTools, but it's nice. And then if we want to, we can also add Actuator. Again, Actuator is not necessary. Uh, it can just kind of show us what we have available to us. So go ahead and finish. I'm gonna let this build and I'll be back with you guys. So now that our backend project has generated Spring Boot, we need to go ahead and open up the beaver that way we can set up the database to our liking all right so now we are inside of our d beaver we have our instance or our local instance of postgres we are going to go ahead and make a new sql script to go along with this so the first thing we need to do is we need to create a user so we'll go ahead and create user i'm just going to call this f user and then with password and then you can set this to whatever password we like i'm just going to put password because this is local no one can hack into it or anything obviously if this was like an rds you'd probably want a little bit better um, username and password but it is what it is and of course you guys don't have to use and i didn't have to use a local instance i just don't want to have to pay for an rds instance next we need to create the database so go ahead and create database i'm going to call this footer db 
And then we can go ahead and do that. So go ahead and control enter and create the database. And then finally, we need to grant privileges. So this one's the hardest one, grant all privileges because it's hard to spell. Holy cow, I got it on database, Twitter, DB to F user. So this is going to allow our F user to access the database. So now we can just create our connection. So go ahead and come up here to a new connection. Scroll down to where we see Postgres. And they must have changed this recently because this was not this complicated before. This is still going to be localhost. The database is now going to be footer DB. Our user is going to be F user and the password is password. We go ahead and finish. It should connect as we see, and it's just going to be an empty database right now, with no tables or schemas or anything because uh, Spring Data JPA is actually going to do that for us. One final thing that I want to do for this application really quick is to get our application property set up to actually connect to our database. So back in our backend code and inside of our application properties, this could be uh, converted into a XML or a YML file if we wanted to, but I'm not that concerned about it. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up the all the application properties that we need because I don't remember them off the top of my head. So first, I'm going to set up a different server port because Everything uses port 8080, so I'm just going to put it on something different, so maybe 8000. And then we can set up our Spring data source stuff. So spring .data source URL. So this is going to be the URL to our database. So this is going to go to JDBC colon slash or colon postgres ul colon slash slash localhost colon 5432. If you guys, or if I was using an RDS here, this would be the RDS instance, and it's obviously going to go to Twitter DB. Next, we need spring dot data source dot username. So this is going to be F user. We need our spring dot data source dot password. So again, this is going to be that password that we set up. Uh, realistically, in a real-world application, these would be put away inside of a environment variable or something along those lines, some type of EMV file that doesn't actually get pushed up to GitHub. It will be personalized from person to person or developer to developer. But again, we're just doing all this locally. Maybe in the future, I'll go back through and kind of make this more production-like. But for the time being, I'm not too worried about it. Next, we need our driver. So spring.datasource dot driver dash class name and this is going to be org dot postgresql dot driver so this is why we need that postgresql um, inside of our palm then we also need spring dot jpa dot database dash platform so this is going to allow us to convert our JPA language into our Postgres. This is going to go org dot hibernate dot uh, dialect dot Postgres. Whoop, PostgresQL eighty two dialect. We also need Spring dot JPA. I guess we don't technically do this, but we're going to show SQL to false. I don't care what the SQL looks like. Then finally spring.jpa dot uh, DDL auto. So hibernate DDL auto. We are going to set this to create until we are completely finished with our application. So now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go up to our window, uh, show perspective or show view, and I'm going to grab our spring. So I'm going to go down to spring and I want the spring uh, dashboard. Go ahead and open this. We are going to throw this on this side. Can you please, there we go. I like it over there. And now if we go ahead and run the footer backend, we should be able to see in our console. And I wonder if I can, let's see, we have a small issue. So let's see what's going on here. I don't love this. Unable to start web server, nested issue. Uh, unable to start blah 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 i'm assuming it's something to do with let me double check all my spelling i probably spelled something wrong in postgresql or something on those signs so jdbc go on postgresql twitter db so let's just double check that i spelled this correctly save and try to rerun it 
should be able to connect, but I might have spelled something wrong. Okay, it cannot load PostgreSQL.driver, so let me double check that I spelled PostgreSQL correct. Because that's also a very good chance I spelled this wrong. Paste. I don't know if it changed or not, so let's see. My fingers are not the best sometimes. And it looks like, there we go. So we're all good. So obviously our database isn't gonna have anything in there right now, but whenever we set up our models, they will actually have something inside of them. All right, everyone, unfortunately that is going to be all we have time for for this episode. We got our entire project set up. We also made it able so that we can connect to our PostgreSQL database. And in the next episode, we'll go ahead and set up our models and I'll explain to you why we're setting them up and how we're setting them up. That way we can take the model straight from Java and put it into our database. So with that being said, I appreciate all the comments and support and everything. If you guys have any suggestions for me, make sure you leave them down below. I'll make sure to read them. If you guys have anything that I could do better, whatever, leave them below as well like i said in the first episode or this is episode zero these are going to be pre-recorded but i can always go back and do some refactoring and things like that uh, if you enjoy the video please leave a like if you didn't enjoy it please leave a thumbs down all the interaction helps either way and also if you guys do not want to miss any videos make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that bell that way you are notified every single time one of these episodes come out i'm planning to do at least two episodes a week maybe three we'll see so with that being said i appreciate everyone peace out i'll see you guys in the next episode have a great great day.